I'd like to welcome everybody aboard. Let's get started right now with news you can use. Uh, we're going to start with the basics. Last week, the Fed, uh, we're going to talk about the Fed and, and, and uh, recession, and then we'll get into some, some housing information to be very specific to you guys. Um, last week, the Fed raised their interest rate again, 75 basis points, uh, three quarters of a percent. Uh, and just to give you some background, at the beginning of the year, it was a 0.25 percent. It's currently at 3.25 percent. So it's gone up, whatever that is, 700 percent in uh, since they started raising in about a half a year. Um, what that's done is that's driven up the interest rates. A year ago, when we had 0.25 percent uh, Fed funds rate, we were at 2.5 or 2.6 percent in terms of mortgage rates. Now we're about six and a half percent. Now that we're 3.25. Uh, projection is by the end of next year, and the Fed is targeting a rate of around 4.75 percent. Um, so we're going up, you know, significantly from here, another 30 percent increase from where we are today, a little bit more actually. And the projection is interest rates, mortgage rates, will be eight plus percent. Uh, okay, so that's the bad news. <clears throat> the good news is that we can make a ton of money in this business even with a high interest rate. I'm going to talk about that in, in a second. Um, one more thing to, to talk about with regard to the Fed. Their number one goal is to stop inflation. Their number one tool to do that is raising interest rates. What happens though, uh, and they're aware of this, is it will slow down the housing market. Absolutely, because of this kind of stuff, going from 2.6 to 8 plus percent. Um, and it will cause a spike in unemployment. It'll put more people out of work. The theory is, Less people can buy houses. Uh, there's less activity, financial activity. We talked about this last week. Uh, the carpenters, the handymen, the you know the uh, foundation layers, all those guys are going to run out of work, and they're not going to bring home a paycheck, and they're not going to be able to spend on expensive things, and it will slow down the overall economy. The bigger problem <clears throat> is that the U.S. dollar is still the reserve currency of the world, and right now the U.S. dollar is near an all-time strength all-time high compared to other currencies. That's why these other countries are having higher inflationary rates than we are. Uh, these things are tied directly. So, you know, now we have an inverted pound versus dollar. It used to be worth $2, now it's worth less than the dollar. Um, and, and so extra care has to be taken with the, what the Fed does because it doesn't affect just this country, it affects the whole world. And, you know, we may end up being in a pretty good position when this thing's all over, but the rest of the world could be in a severe recession, which will ultimately hurt us down the road longer term. So, you know, they've got a lot of masters they've got to serve. <clears throat> Their number one goal is to move this unemployment rate up. It's currently about 3.7. They want to move it up to about 4.5%. They think that'll be enough, uh, along with the slowdown in the housing market, to uh, get that inflation rate back from 8 nine percent back to what they want to be which is really under two but it'd probably bring it back down in the four range which is probably acceptable um okay so that's that's all that's kind of the downside now the, we're gonna talk about affordability and how that affects our specific business um, right now affordability is the worst that we've had in years actually it's going to put a little chart up here <clears throat> we can take a look at uh right here on the, on the far right you see 2022 we're approaching 40%. In other words, uh, if somebody makes 100,000 a year, today it's gonna cost them about $40,000 to house themselves. That is the highest it's been since 1981. If you look all the way over to the left side, about 1981 was the last time that it got this expensive. And just look back a year ago, it was sub, and even two and three years ago, it was sub 20%. So it's almost doubled uh, in this short two, three year period of time. It's, it's a crazy thing. Um, and you know, people can't afford housing at this point in time, but there are more than one way to skin a cat. Let's talk though about what happens when affordability goes up and, uh, or goes down and people can't afford to have these things. Um, what we're seeing out there in the market right now, prices are falling, bidding wars are over, Sellers' expectations are down. If you talk to sellers today, they're a lot more amenable than they've ever been, uh, at least in my 20 plus years in this business. This should add up to a perfect scenario for buyers. That sellers are more motivated. There's more of them coming to the market. They're more flexible, all that kind of stuff, except for the affordability issue. 
um, and, and the high interest rates that we just talked about. <clears throat> but, and prices are going to continue to drop. Uh, Mark Zandi for Moody's has said that even in a, uh, with no recession, we're going to be looking at 5 to 10% drop in prices overall with a mild recession, 15%. And the worst case with a global recession that affects this country, it could be a 25% interest, a 25% drop in number of houses sold. We have had now seven months in a row as of last month where the number of units of houses have sold have dropped. So every month, drop, 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 drop. So there's less sales. But what's happened is there's also less buyers out there. I mean, less sellers out there. There's less property being put on the market. So... Um, at the end of the day, if both the numbers of sellers and numbers of buyers come down, you know, you could make an argument that we're not going to see a big price drop, that everything is going to come down in proportion until we get a large uh, a supply of either buyers who can afford at this affordability level or sellers who must sell. I don't see a huge thing that's going to happen. Six out of seven loans that are in existence today in the U.S., are below this current rate of six and a half percent. By the end of this year, it's projected that 99% of all loans will be cheaper than probably where we're going to be at the end of this year is seven plus percent interest rate, mortgage rate. Um, and, and so that, you know, that's a, that's a problem. People who have a cheap loan, it's a problem and an opportunity. Sellers who have a cheap loan on their house are hesitant to give that up. And so they're pulling that stuff off the market. Um, and what we're running into is there's actually a chunk of buyers out there who can still afford this kind of affordability. Now, there's some things that we can do um, uh, that can help that uh, as a country. And one of the things we've done is we've opened it back up to investment from, from outside other countries. For example, we've let the Chinese come back in with their money and that kind of thing. So there's getting to be a little bit of a resurgence of cash buyers out here. Uh, people who are coming in with their money from other countries are dealing with a declining currency in their country. And it's, you know, essentially it is a safe haven to put it in dollar denominated um, assets in the United States, specifically housing. This is the, the crown jewel that the Fed is trying to protect. Now, I know it sounds unusual, different, odd, sort of like reverse logic that you have to you have to hurt your crown jewel in order to sustain it for a long period of time. That's exactly what the Fed's doing. Um, <clears throat> anyway, as these buyers come in from out of the country, once again, if you got you know a million bucks in China, it's a safer place to buy a million dollars worth of housing in the U.S. than to leave it in Chinese currency yuan or something like that. Um, and so we're seeing that happen. We're also uh, seeing a lot of buyers who are who can get into a house, but can't afford the monthly payment. So the affordability itself is a problem, but they can, they have enough down payment or they can get in under a government program. The government's gonna encourage these kinds of things. They're gonna ask for people, you know, they're gonna try and push for some of these folks to step up and to buy a house. You'll see a lot of advertisements coming out. I think Fannie Freddie will probably do some advertisements. You know, now's a great time to own a house, blah, blah, blah. You should get involved quickly. Um, and so you're going to see people uh, come out and do that. Now, what are we seeing out in the marketplace um, and how do we fix this? Uh, number one, we're seeing a lot of concessions out there. Austin, Texas has got this big run. Uh, buyers are getting $10,000 gift cards to Home Depot. Um, pay closing costs. You can pick up your buyer's closing costs. That will save them cash up front. will allow them to have a little bit higher mortgage. Um, we can boost uh, the broker fees. We used to do this probably 15, 20 years ago, we were in the same kind of situation. It's where you've got a broker, you know, your typical 6%, 3% for each side or two and a half, three and a half, however they want to do it. But we, I, I remember we came up with an idea. We were having a hard time selling houses in the early 2000s. Um, we threw in a TV for the broker. So the broker who, who gets that, uh, you know, gets it sold for us, the, the buyer's broker and the buyer themselves will get a free big screen TV or something like that. And that really helped boost our sales. You just have to think creatively. Um, <clears throat> adjustable rate mortgages are coming back. And that's one of the best ways to fix this whole situation regarding affordability is get one of these teaser rate mortgages. Now, I know this was the thing that caused, in theory, the thing that caused the Great Recession, the housing recession of 2008-9. Uh, but 
you know, we've got the majority of the owners of houses out there are in a safe loan that's cheap. And so it wouldn't hurt to add a little bit of more risk to the marketplace by throwing out some adjustable rate mortgages just to keep the engine going. Uh, and just to give you that, for those of you who aren't familiar with what those are, uh, there'd be a buy-in at three or 4% interest for the first five years, and then it would adjust up to some rate uh, based on some index in the loan. Um, and then of course, there's my favorite, which is interest rate buy-down. You can, you can buy down your buyer's interest rate with their lender by cash. So take that $10,000 gift card that they're giving away in Austin, Texas to buyers and say, I'm going to put this into your loan and that'll buy your rate from six and a half here uh, down to five or four and a half or something like that. Uh, and that gives them a fixed rate that's lower, not as low as today, but uh, I mean, not as low as it was uh, six, eight months ago, but still low enough that they can afford to get in. And then looking back in history, in the early 80s, they had this problem. Uh, they had something very similar. Actually, it was much worse because interest rates got up to 21% for mortgages, 21, 22%. And I run across people all the time. They're like, yeah, I got a mortgage back then on our first house. We first got married, we paid at 21%. And, you know, we had to wait four or five years and interest rates dropped. We refinanced it. And so that concept is what I call marry the house and date the rate, marry the house, date the rate. And I think you're gonna see this as probably the National Association of Realtors that they're smart, they will start marketing using this concept, marry the house. In other words, fall in love with the house today because houses are short, there's not a lot of sellers. The new house stock is almost ground to a halt because these guys can't build a house as, uh, as cheap as they can, or when they get done building the house, they've got more into it than they can sell it for. So you're not getting new housing stock. You're not getting a lot of sellers come to the market. So buyers, at some point, that demand keeps building and they know they got to buy. So go ahead and marry the house, fall in love with the house, buy the house now, pay the 6.5%. Two, three years from now, the Fed's going to have to drop the rate and you'll be able to get a 4% or less mortgage at that point in time. And so that concept alone, I think, will double the amount of buyers that are gonna be willing to jump off the cliff and get into this expensive water of uh, higher priced mortgages. So marry the house, uh, date the rate. <laughs> that, that would be my recommendation for the, the market fixed overall. So anyway, uh, and just one last thing, let me tell you about some of the market prices uh, out there and where they're dropping. They're dropping, of course, most in areas that came up the fastest and got frothy, like California, for example, the West Coast as a whole. So during the month of August <clears throat> alone, San Francisco and Los Angeles each dropped 3.4% in August on the average price of the houses listed. So that comes out to over 40% per year. Now, we won't see a 40% drop, but to see a drop in August is probably unheard of. I'm not even sure if there's any history where that's ever been seen before, where you're actually in the middle of the buying season, which is August, September, October. These are the prime buying months, July to September, October. Uh, I, I have never seen a loss in that month uh, of August. Sacramento, Seattle, Salt Lake City had decreases of 2.5% in August on average. That's over 30% a year. Um, I don't think we're going to see hits that big. I think because everything's coming down in tandem, we're going to see a more stabilized market at some point, even if it's not a balanced, in other words, same numbers in and out. Um, but there is definitely cannon fodder here for arguing that the Fed is dramatically hurting the market more than the intended cure. So, um, you know, I come from the, the ag industry and we had an analogy called the dose makes the poison. In other words, you take the right amount of medicine, for example, and you'll be healthier. But if you overdose on that medication, it could kill you. And that's the position the Fed's in today. Uh, they, I, they're, they're going up, I think, too much too fast, and it will just cause a boomerang effect or a rubber band snapback effect next year and the year after we're going to see rates drop a lot. So I would encourage uh, those of you who are selling houses for cash out there, uh, to focus on those things, concessions, paying closing costs, boosting the broker compensation or fees, uh, adjustable rate mortgages, encourage those inter, uh, interest rate buy downs. And then finally, the general concept of marry the house 
and date the rate. All right.